Welcome to the Orthopedic Indications channel, where we discuss medical education for medical sales consultants and reps. A technique that's become more popular over the last couple of years has been using tibial nailing for these real extreme fractures or for pilon fractures that are amenable to this. So this case discusses using that strategy for this particular patient. And then we also talk a little bit about using or when to incorporate fibular fixation for some of these cases as well, because sometimes you don't have to fix a fibula. Sometimes it really helps gain reduction and stability. Some different thoughts on that. And then uh, for the salvage situation, or if you're thinking about an acute ankle fusion, using a tibial nail for acute ankle fusion for a, a distal tibial pilon that's really comminuted, which I think has become more popular, or in the salvage situation where you're concerned about the soft tissue envelope. So certainly some good discussion in this particular case, lots of points to be thinking about and to take away from this, this case presentation. And this is a case, Bethany and I were just talking about young patient, segmental tibia, comminuted fibula. So okay, Jan, so we're, we're putting you on the spot, Jan, okay? Well, actually let's, let's, Keep the talk about fibular nails for a second. Okay. And pilons. So this would not be something I would do a flexi nail on or a fibular nail on because of the comminution and the shortening. Yes? No? You agree? Don't agree? You know, I would have to look distally if I need to fix that fibula to get a reduction of the joint. You need to fix the fibula to get a reduction of the joint. We're going to tell you that. You're going to tell me that. Okay. <laughs> that is the correct to. answer. I don't know if you need to. So I'm going to just, I'm going to, I may just try to fix the joint and nail the tibia. No. Nope. Then I'll put a, put a guide wire or something on the fibula. Bad idea. Bad idea. Okay. I mean, I think this one would be hard to your point. Like if, if you looked at this and said, well, I'm going to use a fibular nail one that's getting up pretty high and it's going to be hard to maintain your length. I think on this, which is how common it is. Is that what you're getting at Bethany? Yeah. I think for me, for fixing the, if I'm going to fix the fibula on this, which I'm going to fix the fibula on this, especially now knowing what happens, I, I would plate this because of the comminution. I probably would bridge plate it. I might not even open that fracture site. So I would put a little small incision distal, a small incision proximal and slide the plate extra periosteal over that and just make sure the length is appropriate. But I've done, so then for the other ones, so, so some recently I've done some nails. I don't think that you need aggressive, if you're going to nail a fibula with a pilon, I don't know that you need an aggressive fixation like a fibular nail. I think if I'm going to nail it, it's probably like a brush rod or a Nancy nail. Yeah. You just need a lateral strut. That's I mean, right. That's, you're not really, right. you're not getting rotational control here. You're getting. So do you need the expense of a fibular nail? I don't think you do. And also here you would need a pretty long one, right? I mean, you're going to. Yeah. I know they have a couple different lengths now, some of the newer newer ones, but I don't know if it would be long enough here. Yeah, I'm mean, just talking in general. Like, I just feel like if I'm thinking of, if I'm not plating the fibula for length alignment and rotation and comminution, the comminution portion, then I probably just need something to strut it out and make sure it doesn't collapse on itself. So that's going to be like a Nancy nail or a, fibula, a flexi nail of some sort or a longitudinal screw. I don't think I need a fibular nail with that distal interlocking proximal whatever that it provides what about with like syndesmosis like they t i mean i know that like most of the time it's just a lateral strut but isn't there like more and more talk about some of the pilons having a possible syndesmosis involvement would there be any advantage in that situation if you suspect that's the case again it may not know no until you get it all fixed but would that well, be that's the problem i probably don't know until i get it all fixed and then i'll just probably put a screw in around the little the nancy nail or something but yeah the other thing is is when i do my fixation for my fibulas i usually fix it first more more often than not fix it first and the X fix is still on. Okay. Which makes it even more challenging with like the yeah. nail outrigger and everything. Yeah. The fibula, the Nancy nail or the flexi nail or the screw is hard enough because you can't really add duct the foot or invert it or put it in varus with the X fix on. Yeah. I saw some pictures once of an X fix with a fibular nail going in uh, and, you know, comments about how challenging that situation was, but. I think that's a good point. Okay, so we've looked at this, and Jan said he is. What did you decide? Oh, he's all he's all about the original plan, apparently. Right. Original plan. 
It's I'm, all, I'm still I'm not changing my plan. I, I might do a plate. I would reduce the joint, plate it, and then I nail this. Okay. So like what kind of plate are you thinking in this situation, Jan? I mean, I might use an anterior lateral plate. It doesn't, you know, just not put a lot of the screws. I mean, you could do some mini frag fixation. I would do something. It just all depends on how it came together. So something like this or is something more? No, I think that's fine. Cause I think your nail is going to go down there and you know, you're, just, you're supplementing your, you know, your, your nails supplementing your plate and your plate supplementing your nail. So I don't think you need like monster constructs uh, or like a monster plate here. Okay. So, so far it's all looking pretty good. I know you're walking me down something. I just don't know. Okay. What you're... Yeah, we are. All right. So we get to this point. I think everybody's doing high fives, pretty happy with the way everything looks post-op x-rays. So left the fibula alone. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I, as long, I would stress the fibula at the end and if it was stable, I, I would leave it. I mean, I, I don't know if this is a rotational injury. I know I'm wrong because something else happened, but I mean, I would stress this. What, I mean, so this is my question. Is, like what goes into like, like, I mean, if you had to plate this, unless you were to do like a subperiosteal plating or put like a rush wrap, you know, like a, a flexible nail or something up the fibula. I mean, this is a bigger exposure. I mean, this mm -hmm. looked like an open fracture potentially. Um, I'm not sure if it was, but you know, it, it's a lot more soft tissue dissection to put a, a long plate here on the fibula. Yeah. I think I'm very much open to doing subperiosteal plating, even at the expense of a little bit of malrotation, but getting the length right. Yeah. I'll do subperiosteal run with the two small incisions. So I think this is what, two months, Bethany? So she why do you think this failed? I think the um, lateral plafond probably collapsed in and the tail is sat in it. The fibula didn't provide any lateral buttress support there. And the medial mal, nothing was done to. I don't, I don't know if that really increased in deformity, but I feel like it might have. Because if you go look at, go, if you go back to your immediate post-op, I mean, that nail went down or what, at least another centimeter. That's a lot. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's impressive. So you I mean would not that expect that, that much that even it, if it failed laterally. I mean, that's, did you, was this patient like neuropathic or any other health risks? I mean, they said you said smoker, but they were otherwise probably young. No, just smoker. You can put some CT scans. Cuts here now. Yeah, so the whole lateral side, basically. We, we were looking at, if you see that, look at the axial in the middle. I didn't scan through it, but like, that piece here is not, like that plate sits fairly central um, as opposed to over that kind of anterolateral piece there. Sorry. Is that, isn't that what you were kind of talking about today, Bethany? We were, as we were going through this, capturing that anterolateral piece. And then if you don't, you know, if you have the fibula fixed in this situation, in theory, that would have some ligamentous attachment to that as well. I wonder too if you had a if you had a regular distal tibia plate with the nail. Like Maybe. now you want now you want more fixation. Yeah. I thought they were going to supplement. No, I'm just wondering. I, <laughs> hey, I would have done this. I had no problem. With this. I'm just wondering if that's why it like not why it failed, but I mean, it's just if, if it wasn't captured or something, because I, I would not expect this to fail. I mean, I, I've, I've treated many of these just with like screws in the joint and the nail going all the way to the just right above the joint and knock on wood. I mean, I've, I've seen them fail, but I've also seen them heal without issues. So this is a this is a pretty quick failure for such a young patient. So what do you so we were talking about part of the reason we brought this up is now what I mean, looking at this, we we're talking about doing a tibio Taylor fusion, how would you approach a tibio Taylor fusion in this case? Or is that, or do you think something different in this situation? I mean, are you convinced? I mean, is that now all the way through the joint now? Is that why you put that axial cut? No, I put the axial cut because I was trying to get a feel for that plate. I don't think it's through I don't that. think that the joint was well enough reduced to consider not save, to saving the joint. So you don't think you can save the joint? I mean, you think the joint's gone? I, I think the joint's gone. Okay. I think even to correct the deformity, the joint is gone. Because I don't think you can get fixation distal enough to save it. Gotcha. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm I'm open to suggestions, but no. I mean, if you think the joint's not good, I mean, I mean, if the joint you think is salvageable, I think there's a you know you could fix this with a frame. Oh, but yes. if the joint's not yes, salvageable. Yes, I like could. your no, idea. No, I, I mean, she's I not. Correct it like you did that other case with the. So frame. we were thinking. I can tell you what my plan was, and then I can tell you why we brought it up. Okay. So I was going to fix the fibula, get it out to length, push the talus over. And then I was going to have Bob re-nail it down into the talus. How do you get the guide rod into the talus? There's a technique. There's a technique paper on it. Um, I'll find the guy's name and send it to you. I can't think of his name right now. 
because he he published it recently and he, they posted it on LinkedIn. He would make it, it was like an open approach and with an all, make that starting point in the middle of the talus and then drive the wire through that. And he has a case series. I think he's out of the UK. He has a case series on it. That's interesting because I feel like more people do that than that guy and people have it work, but I can't figure out how you would get that guide rod down into the- I hole. agree. Because it's such a hard bone, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the, it, you know, and how do you center it, right? I mean, I, I mean, we think about how many times like people have put the guide wire and it's, it doesn't go through the plafond, right? Like thankfully, like they're hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, not paying attention. I mean, that's pretty strong bone. Okay. Well, that'll be helpful if yeah. uh, you find that, <laughs> send that, send that to us by Thursday. But the thing is, so why would you, and I'm just asking, so you think you can correct it and then that's why you want to nail it from a banana gray nail? Well, he wants to maintain the nail. So we either shorten the nail up above the fracture shizet, or, I mean, you can drop it down into that once it's corrected. And then I put an anterior, maybe an anterior plate on it around the nail. I mean, I'm open to that, whatever. But he wanted to maintain the nail. And I thought it would be kind of interesting. And I've seen it on pictures, the nail drop yeah. down into the tails. And I've done it on a couple of patients, but they were in a frame for six months. And they're, I mean, their bone wasn't, I mean, we just put the nail down, like, because the bone was shitty. And it wasn't a problem. Do you think you could get a guide, like an awl with like you, I guess you're going to, but you're going to expose it. So you should see the middle of the talus. I mean, it's not like you're going to do this percutaneously distally. Mm-mm. Yeah, I was going to open it. So you're saying if you can get the awl in there, create a pilot hole and then, and then reduce it and advance the ball tip guide rod down into the talus. Yeah. I mean, it sound, sounds right. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> sounds good or should we just shorten the nail up and plate it <laughs> the other option here i found the article i'm going to send it to you guys in the chat this is my yeah. it's by richard freeman oh yeah put that out there and then we can we can send it out and then yeah, yeah. or two because he posted a case and then he sent me like his powerpoint on it and then he's like don't worry the paper's coming out soon just in time okay but i like the idea beth like you said adding another supplemental plate though just maybe for more control, because it's such a short segment fixation distally. That's, you know, with that tibial nail, even though like, I guess you can get, I mean, you can get two interlocks in, at least. Right. But I just, I just wonder, you know what I mean? It just seems like it wouldn't be enough, but I mean, I guess you guys will tell me in a few months. Great. It's a good case. Interesting case. 